we'll be talking about tail contribution. If I draw this diagram, you know the wing was here and this is alpha FRL. We are talking about tail contribution. Let me draw the diagram. This is the wing part. We have already done CG somewhere here. This is jet CG. Okay, and this tail is somewhere here, let us say. And we are having tail also having some setting angle we got IT. Right? And then please understand one thing. If this is the V direction, the velocity direction, free stream, when tail sees this dynamic pressure, the velocity vector is no more the same as free stream velocity vector. You know very well, as there is a lift on the wing, this is a higher pressure and the lower pressure, and there are vortices, and the vortices travels like this and induces a downwash at the tail. So the velocity vector, which was free stream like this, okay, but because of downwash, it gets tilted and I call it V prime, and this is V. So if I draw here, I have to draw one line parallel to this, which is not a local velocity direction. Local velocity direction is V prime direction. And the angle between these two is epsilon, which is a downwash. Not clear. OK, let me explain. You know that. If this is the wing, and here there is a tail, right? You know, because of lower and higher pressure, there are vortices, and that induces a downward component at the tail. That is, if this is the tail, and the wing is somewhere there, because of vortices, a downward component will be induced at the tail. Let's say the velocity vector free stream was like this. Because there is another downward component because of downwash, so velocity vector will be tilted downward. That is exactly as happened. This is the V free stream direction. Because of downwash, this velocity vector is tilted. Tilted by how much? By epsilon, which is called downwash angle. Downwash angle. Right. You know that lift and drag are perpendicular and along the velocity vector respectively. That is, lift on the tail will be perpendicular to V prime lift tail, and it will be drag tail will be like this. OK? Clear? Please note that it will not be perpendicular to the free stream direction V. It will be perpendicular to the local V, because that is causing the dynamic pressure. That is the definition of lift. So if I do that, and now I again use this diagram, so I understand two things here. What is? One is, what is alpha t? What is the tail angle of attack? So from the diagram, you could see alpha t will be, what is alpha t, you see, here? This is the tail, OK? Alpha t will be, let me write, then you will understand better. Alpha W minus I W minus epsilon plus I T. Is it clear or not? See, alpha W minus I W is nothing but this angle, which is alpha FRL. Right? From alpha FRL, your Angle is reduced by epsilon downwash. Also, you have to be sure that I have given an IT angle, setting angle here. So your alpha tail is simply this. Is it OK? This is the velocity vector. This is alpha FRL. So the angle seen by the tail is, if epsilon was not there, alpha FRL plus IT. That would have been the angle seen by the tail. 
But now what has happened? Because of epsilon, there is a reduction in the angle, so that has been put here. Okay. Once you know that, now you can also see from this diagram that this angle is nothing but alpha FRL minus epsilon. Right? So if that is true, nothing stops us from writing this expression. Let me write the expression mt because of tail is lt into cos of alpha frl minus epsilon plus d of tail d of tail sine of alpha frl minus epsilon okay and then we have another term minus jc i'll explain you that wait for a minute d of tail cos of alpha frl minus epsilon minus lt sine of alpha frl minus epsilon plus m ac tail let's see what it is what is lt first of all lt is this is the ac of the tail and LT is this distance from XCG to AC of the tail. That is called tail moment arc. Okay. Now, if you see this is LT, so this component LT cos alpha FRL minus epsilon. So this into LT. So LT cos of alpha FRL minus epsilon is this component. So this into LT will give me a nose down moment. So I have a minus sign. And LT is here, LT cos alpha, this part is done. Similarly, you could see for other term as well. Okay. Next is what? We have already learned. What is next? Next from MT. Next from MT, I will come to CMT. Okay. How do I come to CMT? CMT means pitching moment because of tail. That is, you divide MT by half rho V square S into C bar. Okay? If I do that, please remember here, I am dividing by half row V square free stream, not half row V prime square. That is why this needs, uh, draws an attention. Okay? Please understand, this is, the lift is perpendicular to the V prime, and one component of the lift, which is along V, is indeed an induced drag. Right? Because we are non-dimensionalizing everything every coefficient with respect to free stream speed or velocity or dynamic pressure. So that, is, that is the point you should uh, clearly understand. If CMT I define as MT by this, and also now I put alpha FRL minus epsilon, all these small quantities, and again CL tail greater than greater than CD tail, and jet CG is to zero, if I do this simplification, then I get a neat expression, which is mt equal to minus lt into lt from, because when I, when I put this, 1, this I put to 0 because drag I am neglecting, jcc is 0. So I only have pitching moment as lift because of tail into LT tail moment arm minus because it will give a nose down moment, right? So from here, I know how to get CMT. I have to do this trick. Divide by half of V square SC. So I'll get CMT as minus LT into LT by half rho V square free stream, free stream into SC bar. Watch here carefully. What will be LT? LT will be, say minus LT is the tail momentum. Lift on the tail will be what? It will be half rho V square at tail into ST into CLT. Right? This divided by half rho V square free stream into SC bar. 
what is this CMT now stands for? What is the modification in the expression of CMT when you take care of the local dynamic pressure at the tail, which is different from free stream dynamic pressure? So the CMT finally takes the shape as minus LT ST by SC bar into nita into CLT. What is nita? Nita is the ratio of dynamic pressure at the tail and free stream dynamic pressure. So nita is half rho v square at the tail by half rho v square free stream. Right? And you could see ST, LT, ST, LT, SC bar has been separated out. This is nita into CLT. And what is this? ST, LT by ST, LT by SC bar. This is pretty popular uh, parameter called tail volume ratio. Tail volume ratio. We will soon discuss what is the importance of this. Okay. But one thing at this point you should be able to appreciate that pitching moment because of tail will largely depend upon this ratio, tail volume ratio for a given CLT. That means, and what is this? This tells to a designer, if you want to increase VH, you can increase this contribution and increasing VH means either you increase tail area or tail momentum or both, right? Or in a combination. So that gives you a very good design flexibility. So we are continuing with tail contribution. We have seen CM tail as minus VH nita into CLT. What is CLT? What is CLT? CLT will be equal to what? CLT the lift coefficient at tail. What is the angle of attack at tail? We already know alpha t is equal to alpha w minus i w minus epsilon plus i t, right? Where i t was the tail setting angle. So CLT will be what? It's very straightforward. It's CL alpha tail into alpha w minus i w minus epsilon plus i t. You may ask me a question, why not this is equal to CL naught plus CL alpha t into all those things. Why CL naught is not here? Answer is very simple. Tail is generally symmetric and it's advisable to have tail symmetric. That is why here there is no CL naught. Is this clear? So once I have this, then what is my next step? Let us revisit again. What is alpha w? It is a wing angle of attack. What is IW? The wing setting angle. What is the epsilon? The downwash because of wing. And IT is the tail setting angle. Correct? Now, how the downwash is going to change can be approximated by this model for wing where D epsilon by D alpha written as 2 CL alpha wing by pi aspect ratio of wing. This is a pretty approximate thing, but it works. And assuming that E is 1. And uh, epsilon, I can write as 2 CL wing by pi aspect ratio. OK, please take this. You can read some book. You can take, uh, read my first lecture on introduction to airplane performance, or any good aerodynamics book, flight mechanics book, will tell you this, give this expression. We are now coming back how to use these things that we will be seeing. So once I have written this, let me go step forward. Do not forget what are we going to have, what are we looking for? We are looking for the contribution of tail in terms of giving pitching moment about CG of the airplane. And if we can still write that contribution also as CM not tail, plus CM alpha tail into alpha tail or alpha wing or alpha, then I will get a general expression. Okay, that is exactly what I am trying to do. So from this I can write CL t 
tail as Cl alpha tail to alpha w minus i w for epsilon I am writing epsilon naught minus d epsilon by d alpha into alpha wing okay, plus i t. If that is true, then what is CMT? CMT already you know, the expression of CMT is minus V H. So, minus V H neta, see here, neta C L tail. So, for C L tail, I will write this expression. So, I will write C L alpha tail into alpha W minus I W minus epsilon naught minus D epsilon by D alpha into alpha wing plus I T. This further I can simplify as minus V H neta C L alpha tail to 1 minus D epsilon by D alpha into alpha W minus I W minus epsilon naught plus I T. What I have done? I have just taken this common alpha w and d epsilon by d alpha w. So, I have written like this. The rest term I have preserved the way it is. And this is CMT. Now, have a closer look here. Here also you are seeing in the CMT that is contribution of tail to pitching moment about CG. Here also there is a one term, first term that depends upon alpha w, changes with alpha w, and the other is a constant. So, immediately your mind should think, oh, this is constant means this part will give me CM naught tail and this part will give me CM alpha tail. So, I can write CM tail equal to CM naught plus CM alpha tail into alpha wing. So, if I do that, then what expression I get is very simple and you can handle it. So, I am getting CM naught tail is equal to Neta V H, you could see here, Neta V H and minus sign will absorb and change the signs. So, I will have Neta V H into epsilon naught plus I W minus I T into C L alpha tail, that will be C M naught tail and C M alpha tail will be minus v neta into v h this term, this into this, this is the C m alpha term so minus v h into neta into C l alpha tail 1 minus d epsilon by d alpha, this will be C m alpha tail. Let us also now go back to the expression what we developed for C m naught tail. Uh, I have written already here the neta v h is tail volume ratio C l alpha tail epsilon naught. What was epsilon naught? Epsilon naught is because of cambered wing, right? And even at alpha equal to 0, there will be a pressure difference that will give lift and that will give epsilon naught. And if you further understand, remember this is Cl versus alpha. At alpha equal to 0, there is a Cl naught and Cl naught is there means there is a pressure difference. So, because of Cl naught, there will be, or because of pressure difference, there will be vortices and the vortices will give a downwash at tail, even at alpha equal to 0 is the key point here, that is why epsilon naught, okay? And we know how to calculate that, okay? What is IW? IW was wing setting angle and IT was tail setting angle. Now, from here you could see, if there is a camber aerofoil wing, some value of epsilon naught will automatically come, which is 2 CL naught by pi aspect ratio. I am assuming E to be 1, roughly. So, if there is a camber aerofoil wing, that will give some value of positive epsilon naught. Right. What about I w? See, this is, let us say, wing setting angle, I w. This is the wing. Right. If you see this expression, here, I w is wing setting angle, I t is the tail setting angle, right? So, if only we are thinking in terms of tail setting angle, that is, there is no wing setting angle, wing is like this, 
then we need to give a negative IT to generate a positive CM0. From here also you see all are positive. For time being, even if I don't include that, this is a positive number, small number. But if IW is 0, if IT is negative, that is like this, then this gives a positive CM0 tail. This is the case when IW is 0. But the question comes, you can still get CM0 positive if you put IT positive. How it is possible? As long as this difference is greater than 0, you will get CM0 because of tail is positive. That is, suppose if this is IW is 3 degree and IT is 2 degree, although not minus 2 degree, not a negative angle, but if we cleverly put 3 degree here and 2 degree here, you see the difference is 1 degree positive, which will give you CM0 tail also positive. So you can get CM0 positive by giving tail setting angle negative 1, CM0 positive by appropriately uh, calibrating IW and IT in a fashion that IW minus IT is a positive number. So there are, these are all the aspects are optimized to get an appropriate value of CM0 that could be generated through configuration and design. But please remember, what will be the value of CM0? Who decides that? A designer decides that depending upon the stability margin or the degree of stability they want. And what is the trim here? It's a CL and CM. With designer will say DCM by DCL will be minus 0.1, that is 10% static margin. And CL, I say, around 0.7. I want to trim the airplane at 0.7. So designer will tell you have to configure the airplane such that CM0 is 0 0.07. You can find from here. OK? And the moment in the design stage you know that, yes, I have to generate 0 0.07 CM0 and DCM by DCL as minus 0.1, you now align your wing, fuselage, tail, everything, so that finally you can get these values. Clear? So this is the tail contribution. Okay. Now if you recall, we had similar expression for wing contribution also. So if I now add wing plus tail, what is the final expression looks like? So I'll get CM naught will be because of wing and tail, I will add their things together. So I write CM0 wing plus Nita VH CL alpha tail into epsilon naught plus IW minus IT. And let me add CM0 fuse large, which we have not done, but we are adding it. We will do in some example exercise, right? Similarly, CM alpha will be CL alpha wing into XCG by C bar minus XAC wing by C bar. This thing all we have derived, OK? Plus, let us say, uh, this is because of tail is minus nita V. Just now we have completed CL alpha tail into 1 minus D epsilon by D alpha. And let's add plus CM alpha fuse large. These two things we haven't done, but we are putting this number for continuity. Let us revisit this. The CM not of the whole airplane, the CM alpha of the whole airplane, and the CM not is CM not wing. For CM not wing, you know that the expression we derived was CM not wing was CM AC wing plus TL not into XCG by C minus X A C wing by C. Already you have developed that. And all these expressions now we know. So if I want to really ensure that I have a particular CM naught of aircraft required, I can manipulate this VH, I can manipulate location of CG and AC of the wing. And you will see how we do it by through example. Now the next question comes if this is the expression, how do I find the neutral point? Okay, so that is next I am doing 
neutral point of the airplane using this expression. We generally call it stick fixed. Soon you will realize that stick fixed means we are not allowing the elevator to float. What is neutral point? Neutral point stick fixed is that CG location at which CM alpha is zero or the aircraft is neutrally stable. Suppose if I am talking about a simply a wing, then if this is the AC, then suppose CG was here, it is statically stable, but as the CG coincides with AC of the wing, so this wing alone configuration becomes neutrally stable. For the airplane, there will be tail, so this point not be the aerodynamic center of the wing, somewhere here, if I bring the CG, we will find the aircraft will become neutrally stable. So what is that CG location? I am trying to find out. So what I do? I write the complete expression of CM alpha for the whole airplane. We have seen CM alpha is here. Yes, CM alpha for the whole airplane is this one. Now, if I want to find our neutral point, I call it X and P. Then what is the condition? It is that CG location at which CM alpha is zero. So it is that CG location at which this gentleman becomes zero. So if I do that, then I get X and P by C equal to X AC wing by C minus CM alpha fuselage by CL alpha wing plus Nita VH CL alpha tail by CL alpha wing into 1 minus d epsilon by d alpha. You could see here, I am putting this 0. So I want to find what is the XCG. So this term will come on the left hand side. This becomes positive, this is positive. Then divided by CL alpha wing, it is here. CM alpha comes here, changes its sign, minus divided by CL alpha because of this. And of course, CL alpha divided by this, x is the wing. So this is the neutral point stick fixed for an airplane. So if you want to calculate neutral point, what do you require is you need to know what is the XAC location, a wing aerodynamic center location, what is the value of CM alpha fuselage, what is the value of CL alpha wing, what is the tail volume ratio, CL alpha tail, and D epsilon by D alpha, so immediately you'll know what is the point, which is the neutral point. So you should be careful enough when you are layout your aircraft, your CG should not go beyond neutral point. In fact, it should be little ahead of neutral point so that you have got static or stability margin. That exactly we are now going to talk. So this is the neutral point expression. What is the meaning of neutral point? It is that CG location at which the aircraft will become neutrally stable, right? So it depends upon what? It doesn't depend upon CG. Please understand this. It depends upon what is the AC of the wing. It depends upon what is the CM alpha fuselage, CL alpha of the wing, what is the tail volume ratio, what is the CL alpha tail, what is the D epsilon by D alpha, right? So it is on the characteristic of the wing, fuselage, aerodynamic characteristics, right? So manipulating this, you can always adjust your neutral point, okay, of the airplane, right? It's very important because in no case, CG should go beyond the neutral point, okay? But if you want to make it statically stable, so you need to have your CG of the airplane little ahead of neutral point. How much ahead of, that is going to plan out. So let us do some approximation and try to see, can we uh, get some better feel in terms of what is that separation should be between neutral point and center of gravity of the airplane. You have seen DCM by D alpha, DCM by D alpha can be written as, uh, let me write this, CL alpha wing. Please be careful, I will be doing some approximation. Fuselage minus Nita 
Vh Cl alpha tail into 1 minus d epsilon by d alpha. This is the Cm alpha expression. What I will do, I will try to see dcm by dcl equal to what? So now I am doing the approximation. What I am doing is I am writing dcm by d alpha to 1 by dcl by d alpha is equal to dcm by dcl, right? Okay. What are the assumptions I have made? I have made one assumption that CL alpha of the wing and CL alpha of the aircraft are same, almost same, right? This clear one is CL alpha of the wing is basically close to CL alpha of the aircraft. And also we have assumed that alpha of the wing is alpha of the aircraft. This approximation you are making to get some useful understanding about the static margin. I will define it. Just see that. So what I have to do? I will divide this by CL alpha of the wing. And we have assumed that there. This assumption could be made for this specific study. Okay? That should not be forgotten. We are doing this approximation for a particular case. So if I divide by CL alpha, the wing, so left hand side will become DCM by DCL, and this will become XCG by C minus X AC wing by C, right? Then plus CM alpha fuselage by CL alpha wing minus Nita VH CL alpha tail by CL alpha wing into 1 minus D epsilon by D alpha. But see here carefully. I can write this DCM by DCL also as XCG by C minus XAC wing by C minus CM alpha fuselage by CL alpha wing plus Nita VH CL alpha tail by CL alpha wing into 1 minus D epsilon by D alpha. What is this term? This is nothing but X, what? Neutral point, okay? So this is X neutral point by C. So now we have DCM by DCL as XCG by C minus X neutral point by C, or this is equal to, I can write it like this, minus of XNP bar, bar means divided by C bar, minus XCG bar. And dear friend, this separation, I was asking you, up to what point I should take the center of gravity so that in the case when a center of gravity is beyond neutral point, it will become statically unstable. But I was telling you, if this is a neutral point, if CG comes here, it is unstable, but CG has to be ahead of neutral point. But the question was, how much ahead? Right? So this is answered partially by this. What do you say? That your DCM by DCL is minus of is minus of static margin. Static margin is what? XNP bar minus XCG. And typically for a transport airplane, static margin could be 5 to 10 percent of mean aerodynamic curve. So if suppose it is 10 percent, let's understand this. How beautiful this uh, expression is, how wonderful this expression is for a designer. What does it tell you? Let us have a closer look. DCM by DCL equal to minus static margin, and let's say we are talking about minus 0.1 or say 10 percent of chord. What is 10 percent of chord means? If this is the neutral point and this is the CG, this distance is 0.1 C bar. So when you plot CM versus CL, if you know I need CL of 0.6 to, at a particular speed to 
ensure lift equal to weight. So you, you could always have, suppose you are doing cruise and you have a lift, it is the weight. For lift equal to weight, suppose your CL required for that condition is 0.6. So mark here 0.6 and you know that aircraft static margin will be around 10 percent or DCM by DCL is minus 0.1. So draw a line, slope, straight line slope is minus 0.1. So this will tell you CM not required will be 0 0.06. Would you see that? CL 0.6 comes from your trim. 10 percent static margin comes from here, it's the guideline. So if you draw a slope of minus 0.1, it cuts CM axis somewhere here and from here you will find this distance will be 0 0.06. So for a designer, the CM naught aircraft should be equal to 0 0.06 and where from he will get 0 0.06? He will now come back to wing contribution, come back to tail contribution and ensure that tail, wing, etc. are set in such a way that CM naught of the aircraft is 0 0.6, then the aircraft once flying will be automatically trimmed at CL equal to 0 0.6. So this is the beauty. We'll be solving some example on that. Okay. Thank you.